In this latest TikTok trend, it seems like every Gen Z male under the sun is engaging in something that we have unfortunately dubbed raw dogging flights. What? Just like dopamine detoxes and silent walks and whatever Gen Z TikTok influencer rebrand of an ancient spiritual practice before it, raw dogging flights is just a hyper masculine, competitive and despiritualized rebranding of Zen Buddhism. Now, I actually don't think that's a bad thing. Actually, I think it's a great thing, but it's nothing new. As a millennial who's meditated fairly religiously for half a decade, has spent a fair bit of time reading Zen Buddhist books and learning from Zen Buddhist practitioners, I firmly believe that actually the world would be much better off if a few of my younger compatriots spent a little bit more time engaging in these practices. Zen literally means meditation in Japanese, and Zazen literally means seated meditation. And Zazen is precisely what our stimuli abandoning Gen Z males are actually doing. There are different subsects of Zen Buddhism, although Zen Buddhism itself is a subsect of the larger branch of Buddhism. And each of these different sects carries with it a number of differences, which I'm not going to talk about today. As one of many differences, though, each branch of Zen often focuses on a different focal point for the act of meditation. This could be focusing on the breath. It could be the repeating of the Buddha's name in a mantra. <laughs> Or it could be reflecting on a Buddhist riddle known as a koan, such as, listen to the sound of one hand clapping. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Or the active gazing into nothingness, which is kind of the hallmark of Zazen, which is exactly what those who are doing nothing but looking at the flight map for 15 hours are actually doing. The people engaging in this activity go on to say things like, built different. Bro, I'm good. People complain about shit these days, but I'm built different. Okay. Or my mind has no limits. And while this is extraordinarily cringe-inducing like most things that male influencers tend to say, they're not wrong, or at least they're not wrong about the latter portion, their mind having no limits. They're definitely wrong about the being built different part. You see, Zen is designed with one purpose in mind, and that is to be the most direct route possible to cutting through the nature of things so that you can remember that you are already an enlightened being. I won't spend too much time falling down the implications of this particular rabbit hole. A quick TLDR is that the stripping away of everything, aka sitting on a 15 hour flight with precisely no input other than the white noise audio of the flight, by stripping that all away, we become capable of seeing the true nature of the reality that we're experiencing. Or, you know, rather than stripping away all stimuli for 15 hours on an airplane, you could just sit and meditate regularly, but that's a separate discussion. Once we see this true nature of reality, we can become reaware to our own inseparable nature from this true base reality. I'd imagine that's a profoundly beautiful experience to have once you've attained it. We now prescribe mindfulness and meditation as treatments to go from negative 100 to zero. And we do this because they're things that can alleviate the symptoms of the modern mind. They can help quell our anxiety and help us better deal with this kind of deep-seated purposelessness that so many people feel. And it, it can actually help with those things. That's why we've come to find in the research that it's so effective. We're kind of missing the mark. Meditation was either invented or discovered. In my opinion, it was discovered. Not to go from negative 100 to zero, but to go from zero to 100. Meditation's entire purpose was to attain enlightenment or a heightened state of being. And the tenets provided by the Buddha to live a more skillful life, rather than we don't tend to use terms like good, bad, or moral, or whatever, just more skillful life, were what allowed to, us to go from negative 100 to zero. Those were the things that provided a stable foundation upon which the practice of meditation could elevate the experience of consciousness. Now, this is not me saying that those men are enlightened. If anything, it's probably the exact opposite, setting out on a quest to set a new PR, all in the names of being more competitive than the bro sitting next to you, probably is missing the mark of enlightenment. But they're so, so, so close to getting this one right. And I'm sure some of them have had really profound realizations while they're, um, raw dogging it. Like I said, I think this is actually a really positive trend. I love to see people disconnecting and allowing themselves a little bit more space to look inwardly and reflect on their own experience. Because we live in a world that perpetually demands our attention through external stimuli. And I firmly believe that that incessant buzzing of the external stimuli and our inability or unwillingness to then step away from that for long enough to look internally is actually at the root of the vast majority of the mental health crisis that we're experiencing today. So by being willing 
to turn inwardly and to look at that internal landscape and to allow our minds to wander away from us for a little bit and return carrying the answers that our intuition always was carrying, I think will dramatically improve our individual health and the overall well-being of society. But it's not anything new, it's not anything special, and you're not special or built different for engaging in it. It's not an opportunity for personal development or self-help or setting a new PR. It's an opportunity to engage with reality as it is and return to the truth of who you are and who you've always been. If raw dog and flights is something that you've already started doing, good keep doing it. If you now take silent walks or regularly engage in some sort of dopamine detox, great, those are good things. But I, I'd encourage you to recognize that these are rebranded treatments of symptoms and we have holistic ways of addressing the root causes. These practices of mindfulness are ancient and time-tested components of an all-encompassing spiritual practice that was designed to directly address the root cause of so much of our suffering. And if those things are helping you as just their individual pieces, which I think is great, I'd encourage you to pick up a real Buddhist textbook or two and read them every day. One of my favorites is Your True Home. It's a great one to just read one page every day. You can raw dog flights every single day without ever stepping on an airplane. There's nothing unique or special about being stuck in a flying tube in the sky other than you're stuck in a flying tube in the sky, which is insane, but it's not unique. Reality and its true nature is always waiting for you to experience it. With that, till next time, folks.